Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you all have had a fantastic uh, Thursday. Hope you are having a great work week so far as we're finally about to get to the end of it tomorrow. Um, obviously, there is a lot to talk about as uh, the scenario of an impactful event across the eastern U.S. is uh, getting a little bit higher. We're going to break that down in this video, and we're going to really talk about what is going to cause that impactful event, which is Henri right here, which will likely... Uh, turn into a hurricane tomorrow as it enters some more favorable conditions. It's struggling a little bit right now, so it's mainly just maintaining. But we're going to talk about what's going on with it right now and what's going to happen here in the future and what we know. I'll briefly mention Grace. Uh, Grace uh, made landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula overnight as a Category 1 80 mile per hour storm, I believe. And it's just now getting off of the western end of the Yucatan Peninsula in the Bay of Campeche here. And the southern areas of the Gulf of Mexico will re-strengthen and try to push back to category well to category two status um, and make a secondary landfall in the in the uh, in Mexico. So um, a lot to talk about. Like I said in this video, we're going to mainly talk about Henri because this looks like it's going to have an impactful event uh, to the eastern U.S. So we're going to break that down for you guys. If you guys have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button for me. I make content daily. And I try to keep y'all's update as much as possible. Like the video if you like it. It helps the video get out there. Um, I would love to get more subscribers from the New England area. Um, I try to talk weather for the entire eastern U.S. So definitely um, hit the subscribe button. Thank y'all. Provide a comment. Drop a comment. I love communicating with you guys. And uh, if y'all got anything I can pray about, um, definitely put it in the comments. There's a lot to pray about right now, um, especially with the situation in Afghanistan, everybody being affected by COVID. I know quite a bit of people who have it, so um, uh, it's just it's a crazy world. I got a little bit of a personal situation going on in my life. I'm okay. Nothing's wrong with me, uh, but I would uh, ask for prayers for you guys on smoke and prayer requests for sure. So let's get going here. As you can tell, Henri is right here. It's being affected by some northern shear, north northeastern shear. We're going to talk about that here. We'll take a look at Grace. This is Grace. We're going to briefly mention old Grace out here. Uh, she is weakened, but she's going to get into this very, some of the warmest waters in the world are right here in the Bay of Campeche, and it's going to redevelop into a hurricane and make a secondary uh, impactful uh, a landfall here in Mexico as we get into late tomorrow night into Saturday morning. Um, but check it out. This is Henri. Henri is very interesting, even right now, in the short term here, the next 24 hours, 48 hours, um, it really is going to help us know what it's going to do in the long term. And when I say long term, it's not really long term. It's still it's under 90 hours now. So long term as in late this weekend into Monday. It's being pretty much, I wouldn't say blasted, but there's some moderate shear coming in from the north to north northeast. And you can actually tell with the cloud movements, these cirrus clouds um, are hitting the storm and the way it's fanning out. It's almost bowing out in this direction like it's getting hit by something, if you kind of can see what I'm talking about here, as it has a more of a bowing structure. What's going on with the storm is it's just displaced. It's a little bit tilted right now. So the center of circulation is right into here. And um, so right now, um, the uh, I think the recon mission went into it, and I meant to have that pulled up. That's my bad, my bad, guys. But it definitely showed a center of circulation a little bit displaced from the main area of convection, which is to the south. The reason all the main area of convection is to the south is because it's trying to stay away, not literally, but it's, it's, it's staying away from that area of shear. Convection can't explode if it's uh, getting pretty much uh, disintegrated by um, a decent amount of shear. But you can check it out. You know, you can really see this low-level circulation. You see the cirrus clouds uh, spinning out from it. Um, so it's a healthy tropical storm. But it's going to enter it's a lot more favorable conditions here in the next 24 hours as it, as it gets out of the influence of this high-end shear. So right now, this is the update for Grace. As I said, landfall is a hurricane probably late tomorrow into the afternoon evening hours. This is the latest up update from Henri from the 5 p.m. update. Now, about, about the time some of y'all watch this, it might be an 8 p.m. update, but I don't think the winds are going to change. If anything, the winds might drop a little bit, but I think it's going to stick a 65 mile per hour storm, which is actually has weakened a little bit since yesterday. But yesterday, but nothing, um, nothing has happened that we didn't expect, if you will. We kind of expected this to happen. We always expect this to really turn to a hurricane, really tomorrow evening, and it's still forecast to do so. And it's going to start to make that turn tomorrow as it, as it starts to get out of the influence of a ridge of high pressure that's right here, which is helping to pump this shear in place. So look at the latest GFS, this is the 18Z, 
check it out. The storm's initializing uh, pretty well. Um, and going forward here, um, it starts to strengthen. The lower this number, the lower the millibar storm, the stronger it is. So you see that number lower, that's a stronger storm. Uh, so it gets sub 1000 millibar storm as you get into tomorrow morning. It's still going to fluctuate a little bit. It starts to kind of slow down here and then it starts to move up and strengthen uh, moderately. I wouldn't say rapid intensification, but it begins to strengthen a little bit and uh, it starts to move north. And check it out. It starts to head towards New England, and this is one operational run. We're going to check out the ensembles too, so don't look at this and say, hey, this is exactly what's going to happen. But notice the strong the storm begins to deepen. It begins to strengthen all the way up until a certain point, and then it begins to slow down and weaken. But this has a lane-falling hurricane Sunday evening um, into the Cape Cod area, the southeastern areas of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, Connecticut will be infected. And this has a landfalling category one hurricane for sure. Very impactful scenario here. Now what we're going to look, we're going to keep looking at the GFS and then we're going to look also at the European and we're going to look at the icon too, but really we want to focus on the GFS. And I want to show you the steering currents in place because it is completely a crazy situation as far as how this being steered. And I don't want to just bring a video to y'all and just say, oh, here, here's a few model runs and that's it. I want to talk about the, the steering behind it, what's going on, what could strengthen it, what could weaken it, and some scenarios. So here we go. Let's get this uh, fly out my way here and um, being attracted to the light because it's the brightest thing in my room. But here you go. A little bit closer view of uh, that GFS scenario. Uh, as it making landfall, like I said, in southeastern Massachusetts, Cape Cod would get blasted in this scenario. The swells would be very big. And um, it really looks like from what I've been seeing that the storm looks like it's uh, left sided. But that could change. It could change multiple times here. Um, but makes landfall here Sunday evening. And uh, as a 985 storm, according to the latest GFS, it's going to fluctuate. Everything's going to fluctuate, but that would be around a Category 1 hurricane. Um, <clears throat> you look at the steering currents. This is the storm right here. This is starting off tomorrow morning. So this is where it is, where the GFS is located right here. You notice the flow here is out of the north um, northeast. So that is kind of pushing the storm a little bit, uh, how would you say, it? Uh, west southwest a little bit uh, the more this storm continues to go south especially uh, basically the higher of an impactful scenario um, comes about of it hitting somewhere in the new england i'll tell you about why here in a second but the stronger the storm um the more that it can override the steering currents at bay and it can kind of hold its own and keep going west or southwest um, the longer it does that before it turns, the higher risk it's going to impact this area up here. And I'll talk about why here in a second. But check it out here. There's a little ridge right here that breaks down. At the same time, you have an upper level low trough here, break coming down that's going to push this. At the same time as that, you also have a ridge of high pressure that's somewhere up in Canada that's going to slide down here. As this happens, you see these circular motion. It's an anti-cyclone, which is caused by ridging of high pressure. As this moves in, moves in, you can tell that that weakens. This is when it begins to enter a period where there's no shear. There's plenty of warm water. And um, basically, it kind of meanders here before getting turned. It's getting turned because you have this upper level low, upper trough right here that digs down. You see the arrows pointing this way. That means you've got a flow coming out the southwest, which means it's going to steer, steer this storm this way to the northeast. So it uh, picks the storm up, begins to shove it northward, almost northeast, um, it's also getting a boost right here from getting it from pushing this up. Uh, this upper level low trough here will continue to push it up, but at the same time, you have some kind of influence here from a ridge of high pressure that's going to kind of slow this storm down one. And at the same time, this trough that's digging like this, the steering currents around this is just like this, and it pulls back in. It's going to try to attempt to attach the storm and reel it back into a northerly direction from the northeast direction that it's going. Um, you can actually look at all this at Tropical Tidbits, and I'll show you if you can't see it, but the arrows, wherever the arrows are pointing, that's basically where it's shoving the storm. That's wind direction. Um, pushes the storm, the steering current shoves it north, and then unfortunately has an impactful scenario for New England. Um, the ridge of high pressure is huge here. I'm going to show you that um, next. As you're looking here, here's the storm. This shows heights, height, height anomalies. So basically it's going to show you the blues, which is basically troughing, and the warmer colors, reds, whatever you want to call that, which is ridging. So moving forward, um, 
This ridge is beginning to slide down into eastern Canada. It's starting to slide down southeast. You have a trough influence right here starting to steer the storm north. And at the same time, the timing of this is huge. This is going to try to build on top of the storm. It does one of two things. One, it helps to steer it. It tries to build over to the northeast of it, which would help push this a little bit further um, to the coastal areas. At the same time, the trough is trying to pull at it too. But also a stronger storm here would um, would be influence. Basically, the strength of the storm is big down here. So the further it gets to the west down here, you back it up here, the further it gets to the west over here, um, obviously, uh, the further west it is, um, it's not as far east, right? I mean, we, we you know we, we kind of get that. So if it moves um, much further west in the short term, then it's not as far east. So if it was further east, then it would have a chance to scoot out in front of this ridge of high pressure or uh, behind it, whatever this works. But really, we would be talking about in front of it. Then it would can scoot on out of here before it's influenced by this ridging of high pressure. On the latest GFS scenario, the strongest area of the ridge really pops up right on the north side of the storm. What that does is it bogs down the storm. It slows it down because it's trying to push itself against a ridge of high pressure, which tropical cyclones just don't do. At the same time, you're getting influenced by the trough. It slows the storm down. What happens here is there's some colder waters. So at the same time, it's slowing it down. It's getting influenced right here, too, as it's getting pulled in at the same time. But it's slowing down. If it tries to get at right here before this ridge of high pressure scoots in, so stay the ridge of high pressure is right here and the storm is right here, um, then it probably could have time to scoot on out of here before it's influenced heavily by that ridge of high pressure. But in this scenario, it wouldn't be. It would be right up under the high pressure where it really wouldn't be able to move. One thing I want to uh, scenario, it's going to be hard to see on your screen. You see the greens right here and the yellow and the blues? Those are cooler sea surface temperatures. This storm is going to go over some very warm waters as the uh, jet stream is definitely, um, of the Gulf Stream, I'm sorry, guys. The Gulf Stream is way up here off the coast of Maryland and Delaware. And uh, there's some very warm waters, but there's a sharp cutoff right in this area where the storm is forecast to go. So if this storm bogs down and slows down under these cool waters, which are in the 70s, which is not good for tropical development, uh, it's going to weaken quickly. So chances are you might have a Category 2 hurricane, maybe, um, uh, off the far, way off the coast of, um, of uh, southeast New Jersey or something, way over here. And then all of a sudden it gets right here and begins to weaken quickly upon landfall, which would be good. It, that would be one good thing if this thing is ultimately going to head towards New England. So uh, you look at intensity forecast and it shows this. It shows the spike. All, all of these model guides right here, all this line graph, every single model right here has this thing strengthening. Uh, not all of them have it get into hurricane status, but I would say 60, 70 percent of them do. Some of them are, are pretty high, you know, as in high in category one, maybe up to a category two. Well, watch that. And then it shows the weakening, obviously. But um, you look at some uh, hurricane model guidance here, and uh, a lot of them like it moving west still, and then it turns, moves north, then northeast, and then it get, might get pulled in northwest into the coastal areas. So it might be something where it's kind of like Sandy, but maybe not as dramatic as a pool. So, um... You look at the latest GFS ensembles here. Um, as you go in here, you get into Saturday morning, get into Saturday afternoon, and you get into Sunday morning. There's still a big time spread right here. And there's also a spread down here that I want to mention here in the short term. Notice the little bit of spread right into here. If the stronger, if it's a stronger storm, it'll be on the southern end of this guidance Friday morning. It's going to be interesting overnight to see where this thing goes and you know which direction it's going here. Um, but if it's on the southern end of this then models are going to begin to get correct altogether of a landfalling event um, because it's digging further west and it's going to have a more highly unlikely chance that it can get east to miss landfall here. Um, but moving here in time, even here we get into Sunday morning, a lot of these members have a landfalling tropical system in southern New England. So um, back it up a run. And if anything, uh, the latest runs have actually consolidated a little bit and have more of a landfalling scenario. So this is something we really need to pay attention to. You look at the latest Euro. The Euro uh, doesn't have a strong storm at all, but even with a weaker storm, it pulls the storm in and has an impactful tropical, low-end tropical storm hitting Cape Cod in Massachusetts. 
So even with the Euro, even with a weaker scenario, it has the storm getting pulled in by that upper trough, if you will. Look at the European ensembles, and a lot of members have a landfalling tropical system. A lot of them. Look at all these. There's up to 51 ensemble members, and I would say almost 50 to maybe 55% of them have it hitting. You look at the latest icon from 18Z, but you don't look at this model a lot, but it is model guidance. Um, has it strengthening into maybe a low-end Category 1 hurricane, maybe reaching Category 2. 982 millibar storm as we're getting into overnight Saturday into Sunday and then begins to weaken a little bit in that cooler water but not before impacting um, New England as a category maybe a high-end category one hurricane so um, and then it, it does the pulling in scenario too where it gets pulled in by the upper trough very interesting next few days definitely definitely pay attention to this because this could be very impactful for New England so that's all I got guys um, thank you all for the incredible support Stay tuned. I don't know if I'm going to be able to chase this one. That is a 15-hour drive from Columbia, South Carolina, which is where I am located. So unfortunately, the you know, it's, it's crazy. I was talking to some people today. The only reason I would really want to visit New England is during fall time or something like that um, and, and see all the haunted attractions and stuff and then the fall scenery. I, I love fall stuff. So um, I would love... I've always said if there was one place in the world I would love in the country I would love to live it would be like somewhere in New England like Western Massachusetts or something like that where you get um, where it snows during Christmas time where it's beautiful during fall time but anyways I'm just rambling here about my dreams <laughs> so uh, but thank y'all for the support that's all I got you know I got y'all an update tomorrow I don't know if I'll be able to do it in the morning but I'll definitely be doubling it up all weekend so thank y'all for the support y'all have an amazing night and God bless all y'all